you would have all be familiar now with this 2005 BMW GS, my son Jason's bike that had a catastrophic engine failure and the engine's blown to pieces. It's completely ruined. Uh, very dramatic. So we decided to give up on the bike, but here it is still in my garage, a lot of parts taken off. But maybe not. Maybe there is a chance to rebuild or replace the engine. So I'm going to try and do a series of videos to show how we will do this because even if we don't change the engine it'd be interesting to get down, take the parts apart, get down to the clutch which was slipping on this bike anyway, just started slipping, taking the rear shock absorber out, the drive chain, the, the, the final drive to take it right out. So many people have asked about the rubber boot at the front of the final drive. I've covered the back one, how to replace it and to service it. This rubber boot here, which you don't see very well, there there it is. That That's a different question altogether and I, I can't, I'm quite amazed how many people have said, well, how do we change that? Well, the answer is with great difficulty. So let's see if we can just do a few things like that. Little bit by little bit, I'm under no time pressure. This could take, well, it will take many, many months. So let's see how we go. What I've taken off so far is only the basic things. It looks as if there's nothing left on the bike, but I've taken all the bodywork off, which is only the panels. I've taken the panels off. I've taken the exhaust off, and the only other thing is the wheel, the rear wheel. Now, I know the engine's in bits, but that's not going to concern you. The, the barrels are off. I've had to take the injectors off and just uh, strap them to the side. How am I ever going to get them back again? I can't remember anything. But uh, so, so basically, at this stage, it's something you can do. Just f follow your guidebook and take off the panels on the bike. From now on, we're into something slightly different. So you, you're at a stage with it's on its centre stand. Uh, we've got the back wheel off. And we can take off now the rear shock absorber, the petrol tank itself and eventually the final drive, the swing arm, we can take directly off. So bit by bit. So the first thing is the rear shock absorber. I remember seeing Charlie Borman, Ewan McGregor on one of their trips and Charlie could change these, which he did repeatedly on their trips in some incredible time, like, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes in the middle of the desert. So if Charlie can do it, I'm surely I can do it in my garage. So the first thing I need to do is undo the bottom. So for that we need a 50 Torx. So with a 15 millimeter spanner on this end and the same 50 millimeter torx on this end, you can undo. And tap through now. And there is the rear suspension. Actually, you can see how uh, Charlie Bowman could do it very quick. The next thing we'll take off is the fuel tank. So just I take a photograph of this. I mark the bottom pipe. 
there may be some petrol coming out, although I've, I've siphoned off most of the petrol I can, but there's a can underneath just in case. Nothing out of that one. With the top one, you just push down this lever here and it pulls out. And they have a little bit of uh, petrol dripping out. So that's them clear there. We'll now go around to the other side. Now we need to lift this cover on the electrics side here, there. And we have to disconnect uh, the cables here. But I've got to first of all take the negative off the battery. So I'll just do. Well, I've taken the battery out now. That has taken forever because I couldn't stop the alarm. I uh, had to find instructions, try and understand them. Eventually, after an hour, I find how I can put it onto service mode, but it beeps every 15 seconds, even though the battery is not even in the bike anymore. So that annoys me intensely when you're filming something to have that happen. Am I going to have that now for the next year? I presume the alarm has its own battery and it will run out one day. These BMW connectors are always so tricky and if you're not careful they snap off. That's one. There it is. Take it all back. So that's disconnected there. This should be the same thing here. Push this little clip and that comes out a little bit of petrol showing there even though I've drained so that's all disconnected now we should be able to uh, undo the actual tank so let's start with this bolt here I was going to say there's three I'm not sure yet not sure and I know there's one of these this side and one the other side Then there's another one down here, by the look of it. So there was one more bolt on the other side, so four bolts all together, which I'm just keeping separate, see if I can put them back. Now I believe the tank just lifts off. Let's see if that is actually true. Now a simple thing to take off the air intake. I wish everything was this uh, simple. Okay, well now we're going to concentrate on getting the swing arm off or the final drive, which is quite a operation. The first thing is to do is to remove all the cables, the brake cables, the ABS or the speed sensor from here. You might remember from previous videos we had to uh, replace this screw and re-tap it in there because previously somebody had uh, messed up the thread. So we have to remove all that and then the bolts here to be able to take this whole unit off. So this is going to be the fun bit. Speed sensor. Which is a different size bolt on this bike. So on this side of the, of the torsion bar, it's a 16mm, not 17 like at the front. So you're going to have to lock one in there, and then the 50 torques 
on the other side. So holding the spanner through the frame and then undo the, the bolt itself. then that's it, free from this end. Just put the screw together for the moment. I can now gently take out this one and that's a torsion bar free. What I'm going to do now is drop the rear axle where it bends back and drain the oil because otherwise the oil will come out of the hole where the speed sensor was and it will be all over the floor. So though it was only changed recently it only takes a little bit of oil, 180 cc. So I'm going to drain that out so I don't have any problem before going on to the next stage. The swing arm or the final drive up with a strap over the frame itself, that was the easiest way, and let the oil drain out into the tray underneath. Say so there's only 180 of cc millilitres of oil, so it's not very much. So now with all the oil drained from the final drive, we undo these four Motorworks replacement bolts. Next we have to prise off the rubber seal Oops, on this side of the swing arm. That's that there, and then it takes a 30 millimeter socket to undo that. So, 30 millimeter socket with locking that we've got to loosen. Oh, it's okay with this long bar. I've just put a, a strap around there just to support it in case it fell. I want to be able to, this is quite difficult without a spanner, but at least it is coming. I've got to take this right out. Right out, it needs to be greased and uh, that sounded quite rough when I was, uh, oh look at that, there's water in it. Wow. Water gets into everything. So I'll have to look at that very carefully. So that's that side. Now at this end you need a slide hammer. I happen to have one. That was so cheap on eBay. I bought it four years ago for doing the same job on an older BMW. But the fittings were no good for this. I needed a six millimeter thread to go into this cap here. So I've just turned down a piece of steel and a 12mm to go into it, so I've made just this little tool here. So by swinging, the way a push hammer works is by swinging it that way, you come against the stop, if you can see it there, like that. So it's a hammer in reverse. So by doing this, oh, you can see it already moving the cap. There it is. Without it, you've got no chance of pulling that out. With it, it's a piece of cake, even though I didn't have the right actual tools. So this is a tool I made, just on the end. I can keep it for another day. Not that you need it to put back, but I just needed a 12mm thread there and a 6mm thread there to go in. There is the slide hammer kit that I bought four years ago. And the now this is a very tricky thing. I've got to cut the cable tie that holds this boot on. And I don't want to cut the boot. Oh, I've done it. There it is. I actually think that the swing arm will, will come off and leave the the actual uh, arm 
or the rotating shaft, the shaft inside. You can see how loose it is. Oh, that's not difficult. That was easier than I thought. Now if I can undo this strap, I can lay this down. There we have it. So if you want to change this boot, which I'll do now, it's, it's off anyway. You can see it's getting a little bit worse for wear. But so many people have asked, how do you change this boot? That's how you have to do it. You have to take the swing arm off. But you could leave that in position by the look of it. I've got to take it out, because that's into the gearbox. And it's got to come out. So that's my next stage to find this C-clip. But at least I can manage now on my own with the arm off. So one complete swing arm off, ready to clean up, check all the bearings and have ready, hopefully, to go back one day. So a new morning. I was very pleased with yesterday. And as you know, I got down to taking the final drive completely off. But what has perplexed me is that in here there's a C-clip. And when you read the manual, it seems to indicate you take the C-clip off. I gave up last night. I can't see it. How do you get it off? Reading on YouTube, it seems that you don't. You prize this universal joint over the C-clip. I just hope I'm right. There it is. Easy as anything. I don't know where the C-clip is. It's supposed to be. The next job is to remove the actual fuel injection system. I've taken it off, obviously, the part of the engine, the cylinder head, because it was uh, smashed to pieces anyway. Um, and removed the air intakes. So that, that's what you end up with just the injector with all this spaghetti junction of cables. To be able to divide the bike in half, I have to disconnect this now. So I've got to remember very carefully where all these parts went. So the first thing is the injector itself. This is a little slide clip. there. The electrics. So the first thing is to take this off and then we undo the injector itself down here. So let me just get a spanner. So the normal 25 torques, takes that off, and there's an o-ring there that will need replacing no doubt. So let me just put this screw back in there. Keep that clean. I think I'll just put a plastic bag on that. We then have
I don't suppose you can make a mistake putting this back. Because it's not as if you can get the wrong component in the wrong place. I do apologise for this 15 second beep of the burglar alarm. It is driving me insane. I spent the evening going through everything. There is nothing I can do. It's how the system works. So let me just put those two back in there. And the clip so that I don't lose it. went on there. So that just leaves the throttle itself, this mechanism, to detach. I bought a whole load of these plastic bags that are so useful for putting um, screws and things in them, but for something like the injector that must be kept clean. And again, start making notes of things you need to order from Motor works. I need a new O-ring for that. So now I've got to remove the throttle cable. So the cover just slides back, as you can see there. And uh, we don't want to touch this too much, but we've got to disconnect the cable to be able to remove the body. Disconnect the cable. Take the slack out of it and that means we can now undo the body here so this is completely separate so you need a 10 millimeter spanner just to undo so when you've unscrewed that what you have to do then is just put that spring up and this body comes off. So if you don't notice that spring you're a bit stuck. So that's a whole injector off ready for um, cleaning and put into one side. Put this back on to where it came so you know where the adjustment was because we've not a, we've not changed that adjuster so there it is in its position so this is the left hand side injector first thing disconnect this wiring connector as we did on the other side so now we want to undo the fuel injector bolt. So you pull that out. And again, what we'll do is just bag that. Because you don't want to uh, cause any damage. There's the O-ring that has to be, this O-ring here, that has to be changed. Let me just get another plastic. I'm going to just bag that. We now have a, a different connector here from the other side. So take that out. So wind the cable to take it out so as not to adjust the setting. Sorry, pull it up and it pops out like that. So that's your body free then. Now I did find this quite a difficult thing because the, the instruction manual from Hayes doesn't tell you how to get this splitter. This is where your cables to the injector and your throttle and everything go to and you've got to take this off. It took a bit of finding but there's a clip here 
So you lift that clip up. And whether you can just see it. Hang on a minute. There. There's a clip there. You see how I've lifted it up. And now you've got to draw the body out. And it comes. I think it comes towards me. There it is. Like that. How far you can draw it out. I've got no idea. Oh, right out. There. Now we have to remove the starter motor cover, which is here below where the injectors were. There's one screw there. Deep in there, you have to once you have to unscrew that so you can now manoeuvre somehow. Oh no, dead easy. Just comes straight out. There is a mark, a little line, just there on the shaft itself. Just above that, and it lines up with this gap. So that tells you, if you haven't got that, you need to put a centre punch mark in there. That tells you where to line it up on the shaft. If you're to take it off the shaft, which I think I'll do with this bolt here, undo it and pull it off the shaft. Now, some people undo this bolt, which saves taking that, but it's a 12 millimeter spanner. And I can't get it on. It's too thick. So I'd have to grind the spanner down. And then you couldn't, oh, maybe I can't. Yeah, I can. If this is the case, just fit it. Then I think it would be easier because you're not altering. No, it's not easy, is it? I might have to sacrifice the spanner to, to get in to do it up. But I think it's easier than taking the shaft off the spine. Gonna be have a little bit of patience with this. I might well sacrifice the spanner, grind it down so that it'll fit in. So that's the shaft taken off, and just uh, keep the washer on so you know what happens there. So another job done. We have the clutch release cylinder, this this part here now to release, to take off. And funny enough this is alum bolts, isn't it? Strange that it's torque all the way through but just in a few occasions it's alum bolts. So just got to get an alum sp spanner to undo these two here. next thing to do is unbolt the five bolts holding this rear mudguard. We've got to get to the wiring, which is inside here, to remove the wiring. It's quite a palaver, isn't it? So five bolts to do. I've done them all but one. that one. Now we've got cable ties all the way down here to disconnect it. You go all the way down this cable, cutting the cable ties and your diagnostic unit 
it's not taken off of course it's just unplugged from everything so that you can pull the cables through so by pulling these cables through in this manner you disconnect in the rear end of the bike so you're down to there so far so that's the cable from the rear lights that's your diagnostic control that the GS911 goes into clips in there and of course the cable ties all the way down so now we're down to this little unit here which I haven't a clue what to do with how do I get this off the smaller one that's it Okay, that's got that off. Let me put the screw back. You've got to be so careful with all these screws. Whatever you can put them back, put them back. If not, put them in a plastic bag and label where they came from. Otherwise you'll get yourself in a right mess. So now this is... This is somehow fixed. Securely fixed. Yes, it's a tiny little Phillips screw, so now that is released. So I'm going to just put the soft tapper back in there. Connect it back up again. So I know what's what. I might as well take the whole of the tray out. Well, it's not just the tray, it's a complete back mud guard. There it is. It does look very empty now. The bike is hardly a bike. We're going to end up with just a frame soon. But there's quite a lot of wiring and pipes to yet disconnect before I can go any further. I'm doing all this with the Haynes manual, following it bit by bit. It does do it step by step. What it doesn't do is tell you a lot of things that you've just got to find out like that screw. Well, what you've got to remember is that every single cable that connects the front here to the back has got to be removed. So what I do is I break the cables on connections I, I label them B and B um, just as a safeguard to be able to join them back to the right one because some of the connections are the same. But remember that the the bike unscrews, the frame unscrews here so the whole of this comes apart. So you see all these cables down here, all of them, have to be released. This has to be released. See if I can do it now. And then released. release from there. Again it's better to put these clips back as you go. So the next thing I've got to do is undo this plastic uh, mould in here that has all the cables in it. So it's a way of containing the cables all together to be able to lift that out. There's one thing I've not covered and I can't. This is the ABS unit. Now about 18 months ago, Jason's ABS failed this, and he went to a specialist garage, George's garage, I think in Bradford, who can disconnect this, disconnect the servo, so he doesn't have ABS anymore. There was a massive problem between 2004 and 2007 uh, with all these bikes that the ABS often packs up. and. It's virtually impossible to be able to repair them, or it's impractical to repair them. It's easy to just go back to normal brakes. And he's enjoyed the brakes ever since they were 
professionally disconnected. It was a, a £500 cost, uh, but you see there's no pipes in there. So that makes my life much easier now that this CBS is completely disconnected. If, if at this stage yours is still working, of course you want to keep the ABS working. If there's no problem with it, then you're going to have to look at the handbook how to disconnect some of these parts. It just, uh, there's a heavy cable going down there somewhere. That is what's stopping it. But is it enough off now for the frame to be able to come off? We'll find out. So that's four one side, three the other from what I can make out. There's another 50 torques here. Which is going to be quite difficult. There it goes. Well, I've just started undoing this final bolt and the whole subframe is beginning to move. And I'm on my own. I'm a little worried about the engine just being on a scissor jack as well. It's not very stable. Well, I've resorted to my big blue lift. I tried two or three things and they're all very, very worrying since I'm on my own doing this. I've got the big blue lift that's just fitted in between the... Uh, the front wheel and the the centre stand and I've put the crossbar on to go right across the engine and it feels much more stable than anything else I had. That means there is just one bolt holding the frame on now. This one here. So somehow I'm going to have to grab it. I don't know what I'm going to do if there's lots of cables holding it on. I don't know how I'm going to support it. I don't think there's a lot of weight in this, it's just the frame. But if I've got to pull it back and then find the cables joined, what am I going to do with it? There's one cable I haven't uh, unclipped on the other side, so I've got one wire. <laughs> I've got one wire holding the whole of the back frame on. I just don't know whether there's any others. Let me just unclip this one. Let me try a little more. Wow, how to break a bike in half. Will it ever go back together again? Oh, you can lift it with one hand, it's not that bad. And the other half. No wonder BMW say they build the frame around the engine. If I end up taking the engine out, there will be nothing left. There'll be front forks and a wheel. I expect BMW put it together in about 10, 20 minutes. I think it'll take me a little bit longer, don't you? So I'll just undo the feet of the start motor. So we can take that cable off. Everything is much harder to get off as we go inside where the dirt has piled up over the years. It's a gleaming copper thread in reality. And of 
copper washer. Let me just put that back. The next thing is to take three bolts off the clutch housing cover so we can take that off. And there we've revealed the dreaded clutch. Ah. Like that. There it is. One complete clutch, clutch assembly. To replace all of this and this is about £700 in parts so I'm really really hoping that it's just the friction plate itself that everything else is okay how loose that's supposed to be I don't know should come off the flywheel oh yeah it's lifting now there it is So that's that way, there is a friction plate, well I don't know whether you can see that there, 5.4 and Hayes manual says you should change at 4.6 so there's plenty of life in the friction plate but it had started to slip so it would be madness wouldn't it not to change this even though this is a hundred and something pound to get a one that's not affected by oil it would be better to do that the rest of the money is in everything else this seems very very smooth can't see having to change this and the flywheel there's not as if there's a tooth missing or even damaged in any way that I can see just where I've wiped over it so I think from uh, motor point I could order a new upgraded friction plate which can even take oil on it not that I can see any trace of oil so it had just started, and Jason said it's just under heavy acceleration. He noticed it just started to slip, but we could live with it. And you can understand why when you see what you have to do to change it. But this would be £100 instead of £700.